Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, our guys are anxious to get back to, to work today. Um, I have, have a big, important week ahead of us. Uh, we had a good uh, meeting yesterday, team meeting in practice, although we were just in spiders today. We'll be in full pads, and um, obviously we need to make a number of corrections and uh, identifying those and making sure that um, uh, we hit on those things. I know the players and coaches uh, were disappointed uh, from Saturday because we didn't uh, uh, meet the expectations that, that we want to have, and um, it's uh, something we're going to learn from and move forward, and, and uh, uh, it's easy to it's easy to praise everybody when uh, you're successful and it's easy to be negative when you're not successful and I think sometimes in this world we're probably too negative and so uh, we're going to emphasize uh, the things we have to get corrected and uh, and continue to work and continue to, to grow with the guys because that's uh, the only thing we can do and the only thing we know how to do and just get back to work and go go play so open up for questions. I guess one thing that might be positive and looking forward is the young talent that you possess on this team. I think they kind of 16 retro freshmen or true freshmen have reported a statistic in five games. Yeah. How have the, the young talent on this team been able to contribute so far? Well, because we put them in positions in practice for starters to try to give them the sense of what it would be like in a, in a game because of how we practice. I think it's uh, there's there's a lot of pressure and stress in the practice setting uh, that helps them. Um, but you also don't know how they're going to perform when the lights really go on. And uh, I've been pleased. Uh, I, I know that uh, you know the future's now, but the future's also bright because we're we're playing an awful lot of guys. And there's still a handful of guys that we discussed about on Sunday that are, are really close um, to playing, whether that means they're going to play all the, the rest of the games or just play the four. Uh, this will be a big week because we are going to put those guys in a lot of situations uh, where they're going maybe not against a first team guy, but maybe against a guy that's maybe our third wide out and he's the third corner to see how close they are because we're going to need them moving forward. Two guys in particular that might be here today to speak with us, Josh. Youngblood and Joe Werf, and what have you seen from those two? Well, Josh is obviously had high expectations coming in, and we all we all knew about Josh, and he's somebody that we have visited about uh, with you guys at length, and each week in practice I just see him gaining more confidence and he played fast on Saturday I, I take the kick returns for example and a couple of them will get him corrected I don't think he should bring him out but he's a true freshman and we got to help him in those situations but the moment wasn't too big for him and he hit the hole hard and, and played with some urgency and even away from the ball sometimes um, he does a really good job of, of getting open or really good job of blocking as far as Joe you know with us losing Jordan for a little bit, we wanted to get another back involved that uh, had had a little bit of a some juice like Joe did uh, or does, and so we gave him a few carries, and we were really pleased with what we saw. Same thing, the stage wasn't too big for him, and I think moving forward, you'll see more of both those guys. Um, Coach, uh, a lot of people would see some stats they think matter, some stats they think yep. don't. I know you're a, a points guy in winning and losing, yep. but are there any metrics or stats that you kind of find yourself gravitating to to see how you played after the fact? Yeah, I, I think the easy thing would be turnover margin, but I think the one that we have looked at through the first five weeks is the explosive plays, you know, 20, 20 yards or more, uh, and it's something on an emphasis on defense that we have to uh, limit and, and eliminate, and mainly uh, most of that stuff is, is is tackling. With us being in more single high stuff with one free safety, you're going to give up a back shoulder fade on a corner for 22 yards. All of us can live with that, um, but we can't give up uh, an explosive play where we have him pinned in or we should make a tackle and then offensively um, you know we need to have a few more explosive plays some of those are protection some of those are making a guy miss some of those guys some of those are getting open all those things but that's the that's probably the biggest statistic that we've got to get flipped talking about some of those freshmen playing especially the true freshmen in your experience how, how long does it usually take for the light switch really to turn on with guys in the service? Yeah, everybody's different. Um, 
Josh is further ahead simply because uh, I think he did a phenomenal job during the summer of trying to learn as much as he could from the older guys, uh, and uh, it just came to him a little bit easier. It's just, it, it, in positions are different. Wide up maybe is a little bit easier. I keep going back, and I've said this to you guys before, Cooper Beebe is one of the most impressive freshmen that, I, that I've seen. And Cooper Beebe will be a great football player for Kansas State, but he's a true freshman that's – not quite ready to play in Big 12 and more from the mental side of things. So every position may be different, every player may be different, but those are just two pretty good examples. With the start of Big 12 play the last two weeks, what what would you say are some of the biggest lessons you guys as a coaching staff have, have learned over the last two weeks? Um, well, just try not to outthink yourself sometimes. You know, uh, I, I think we, we did a little bit during the delay at Oklahoma State trying to reinvent the wheel because we had an hour and a half. And let's see what, what else we can draw up. What are the things that we can create? And sometimes all the things you worked on, you should have stuck with. And I think that starts with me. Um, and, and then just I think the more, more than anything, we just continue to learn our talent and what we we are capable of having what are, are we capable of making a lot of uh, adjustments at the the quarterback position probably are we capable of making a lot of adjustments at the corner position probably but at certain positions where we're not as experienced we we can't do that um, how long would you say you're expecting to be without jordan brown boy i i would still say he's a few weeks away i i would i would be Knocking on wood for for Oklahoma, um, but I don't. I know he's not going to be with us this week, and I doubt for next week. You've gone back and studied the way the running game has gone the last two games. Are you guys close to breaking big plays, or what do you need to do? Different? Well, we were obviously, you know, I think all of us are smart enough. We were much better this past week than we were against Oklahoma State. I thought we ran the ball um, with some success uh, against Baylor. The, what we have to eliminate is the negative plays. We, we, we're getting seven, we're getting eight, we're getting nine, and all of a sudden um, we miss a block, we miss a read, uh, we miss a cut, and all of a sudden uh, we lose two, we lose three. That's the thing that we have to eliminate from, and it's everybody. It's it's not the O-line, it's not the backs, it's not the tight ends, it's not the core. It's a collective group that we have to eliminate the negative plays. And I know the offense is still new to some yeah. of these guys. Is there any temptation with two weeks here now to maybe adjust things for the personnel you have and make it simpler? I think you always have to do that, absolutely. I think you always have to. Um, you know, we talked a, a little bit on Saturday and, or excuse me, Sunday and Monday, moving forward, what's going to be our identity? Because over the next seven weeks, this is what we have and what we're going to do. Um, we, we also know we have to be able to run the football. We have to be able to stop the run. However, we do that. Are we more of a pressure team on defense? Are we more of a man team? Are we more of a zone team? Um, those are things that we're looking at throughout this entire week. Um, and we're focusing on Kansas State more than we are TCU. Same thing on the offensive side. Are we better running the ball spread out? Are we better running the ball condensed? Are we better running the ball under center? Are we better running the ball out of shotgun? We'll do all those things because I think that's what makes it um, more difficult to defend is when you can do more things, but you also better have to be able to hang your hat on something. Coach, you just mentioned the seven straight weeks you're coming up on, which is a really tough stretch. We knew coming into the season there were some issues with that mm -hmm. experience. And but balancing that out, you also have a lot of seniors. Is yep. there any temptation now as you get out on the recruiting trail maybe to look a little more in junior college where there's a little more experience or you can stay the course with the, the freshman development program? Well, I think you have to have a mix of both. Um, you know, you, you look at the offensive line positions, a great position in the fact that there's so many upperclassmen. Yes, you're going to look at a junior college player there, but do they, do they fit? Can they get out? early? Are they May guys? Um, can you find a high school guy that's 280 that can be 310 in a year? Do you find a high school kid that's 240 and it's 310 in three years? You know, those are the things that, that we're tossing around every day up there. But that's just one position. And so, yeah, I don't think we would, we would say, nope, sorry, we're only going to take high school kids. Or you know what, guys, we got to go find eight junior college kids. I never will do that just because I still uh, am a long-term plan guy. And you, to, to some point earlier, we have some really good freshmen.
freshmen. So if we keep recruiting really good freshmen, we're going to have a, a, a solid foundation for longer. Just a follow up to that would be, does this four game rule further change that dynamic where you can measure guys yep. and get them experience without burning the unit? Yeah, yeah, and, and we have to be cautious. You know, there's some, like Josh, he's just going to play. You know, Jordan, I think, has played in a couple. We have to make some decisions, but part of that is Jordan Brown. You know, I don't want to burn a guy's uh, shirt if I, if I, if, if he can't help us substantially play a bunch of snaps for us, but it, it's the guys know about it. That's the thing that, that players are, are are more educated on it now of how many games I've played, um, you know, am I playing enough? Everybody wants to play. Every freshman wants to play. It's us trying to tell those guys, trust me, in four years when you're a redshirt senior, you're going to look at me and say, thank you for, for holding my year so I'm able to play as a 22-year-old. When you go back and watch it over the last two games, is, is it maddening to see so many plays that end up being – big plays against your defense or negative plays on your offense for one thing, one guy that yeah. do his job right. Yeah, I don't think it's maddening. I, I don't want to have my whole, my whole life on that. You know, I, I, I understand it's a process and I understand that, you know, it is it is it ability? Is it is it coaching? Is it um, scheme? Is it lack of experience under our scheme? I think we look at everything. The one thing I promise everybody here is, I mean, there's no stone unturned. I mean, we're up there, you know, all day Sunday, all day, all night, Sunday night, Monday night, trying to trying to find the things, trying to see what will make us better. And I think that's the challenge, and that's the thing that, that excites me so much is – you're right, I haven't been in this position before, but it excites me because I knew when I took the job that there were going to be challenges. And, um, you know, I think the the greater challenge is the, the greater reward. And so and that's what we've kind of expressed to the coaches and guys that uh, that's why we got to stay the course. You mentioned earlier that you guys may have been overthinking some things as coaches in, the, in those Big 12 games. Do you feel like it was at all maybe trying to learn how to coach in the Big 12, or was it just that was that game? No, that has nothing to do with it. I, it, I don't think that's a, a – no, not at all. Um, it's just the moment of that that hour and a half. I said one game. I didn't say multiple Big 12 games we did that. I said one game. And, no, that was just one game. And, uh, um, once again, it doesn't matter what level you're at. You know, well, we beat Iowa State. We beat Kansas State. We beat KU. Uh, we beat Iowa. We beat Minnesota uh, at a different level that you guys always want to emphasize that level. I'm just going to keep telling you football is football. You guys can believe what you want, and I'm going to believe what I want. What, what have your initial impressions been just their first two games in the Big 12? Have you, have you had any differences with, with coaching at all? No. I, I think it's pretty much what I thought it would be. Um, and, uh, you know, even even the two games we've played, the defenses um, uh, have been an aggressive style of the two defenses we've seen uh, offensively. Um, you got to have weapons. You know, bottom line, you, you have to have weapons, you know, whether it's wideouts, running backs, quarterbacks. Uh, and I've been, I've been really impressed. But also goes to show you, it doesn't matter what you did one week, you didn't mean you're going to win the next week. You know, I don't know if anybody would have thought Texas Tech would have beat Oklahoma State. And sure enough, they did. And so that's why, you know, I look at it big picture and, and say we have to focus on this week and getting our work done and getting better to face the next opponent and not worry about well, what's what's in game three down the line and game nine down the line. We just got to focus on our job. When it comes to bye weeks, are you someone who has the same routine regardless of when they happen or when they fall, or are there things that you thought from the first one that you yeah. had that you're like, okay, that did not work yep. practice things and we need to change that? Well, I think it all depends on when they are. Um, you know, if we had this in week nine, I think everybody's beat to heck and you got to be smart with them. We just came off a of bye week, we played two games, and we have another bye week. And so um, we are doing things a little bit differently simply because this is the last bye week we have and we want to get some look at some younger players and so we'll put some guys uh, in positions we'll even scrimmage uh, on one day a little bit with the young guys that maybe haven't played as much uh, and then uh, we now will look at more of 
where's the areas we've struggled at? Here's an area that we've struggled in the high red zone between the 25 and 35 yard line, getting things established there. So we'll look at it and say, we're gonna go our one offense against our one defense and work in that high red zone. We'll do that today and we'll find another area tomorrow um, it, it, rather than saying, okay, we'll just spend two solid weeks on TCU. And then from Saturday, how, how promising was it to see how well Phillip Brooks played in terms of getting career highs in both receptions? I saw that coming uh, with Phillip because I think he gets better and better. Uh, and uh, I think with Phillip, it's just uh, a confidence level, and he's a really quiet, reserved guy. Uh, but he's a competitor, and uh, I was really pleased to see him be one of the go-to guys and make play after play. And uh, uh, I, I know that Skyler was excited to see that. It, that kid made plays. I think Sammy Wheeler made a couple of really good plays that's going to help us. And, and Dalton Schoen played one of his best games. So we're, you know, even though we didn't have Malik, uh, some other guys stepped up. Josh Youngblood's another one. What's impressing most with Devin, your partner? Um, his ability to place the football. You know, he's got a great leg. Everybody knows that. Gets the ball off on time. Um, but the ability directionally to punt the ball where we ask him to punt it, uh, whether it was into the wind uh, or, or with the wind, that's tough to do. And uh, that's why it'll, it, it, as he progresses and continues to improve on all his mechanics, um, I think he has ability to, to punt on Sundays. Coach, going back to depth, I just thought of this. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. You, you have 85 scholarships here, all the full scholarships. Yep. At the FCS level, you had 63 that you can divide up to 85. To, to 85, yeah. Out of curiosity, how many of those did you want to typically be full and then? Uh, probably 75%. Okay. Um, would you say right now, as you sit here, over the last few years at North Dakota State, you had better quality depth there than you currently have right now in North Dakota? Yeah, but we were there for eight years too. And you you have everybody that's in the upper Midwest that knows nothing about any other school because there's not a whole lot going on in North Dakota. They all want to walk on there. To kids, at, to kids in Western North Dakota, the only school in the country is North Dakota State. The, the great thing about the state of Kansas is there's so many community junior colleges here. There's a bunch of Division II schools here that everybody comes here. And that, that's a credit to the state and it gives kids more opportunities. In the state of North Dakota, there's not that many opportunities. And so we were able to get a ton of kids a partial scholarship or to get to walk on because that's their goal, that was their dream. And so you have those kids for five years, obviously they're gonna improve. Can you explain how you've utilized the senior class and uh, facing this kind of adversity in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, just basically to challenge them to, if you see something, say something, take ownership, you know. Um, and I'm not, and sometimes it's it's a, a correction. It's not to chastise somebody or just to rip somebody. I think sometimes it's to coddle somebody, put your arm around them and say, hey, it's, it, it's here's what you got to do to be successful. Follow me. Uh, watch what I do in the weight room, watch what I do at practice. Um, because, you know, it's, it's to the younger players, especially that aren't playing, th this is, I, I get it. Every, every freshman, every redshirt freshman wants to be the guy who wants to play. Some of them are ready, some of them are not. And sometimes they need to be told, you're, you're, you're not there yet, but let me help you get there. And uh, I, I, I'm pleased with the seniors that we have because um, you know they keep hearing that message and it's not just a once in a while message. It's been going on since I got here and I think more and more, go back to our deal, they're trying to take and they are taking more ownership. Some of the, some of the struggles in short yardage situations, I know you mentioned like on second down, are there commonalities between those plays or is it a matter of Boy, it's just one one thing, you know, maybe it's a missed block, maybe it's uh, we missed the hole, you know, that that is, you know, to the that's that's another thing that I would say would be frustrating to mess for sure. You know, it's third and one, it's fourth and one. Um, for us not to be able to get those, that that's something that um, you know we're gonna. That's one of the areas that we're gonna work on. Whether it's red zone, hey, it's it's third and one. It's a third and one period. It's a fourth and one period. Um, because those are frustrating. Yeah, without question, we we collectively have to be able to get those, and that's that's everybody. That could be a, a call to an execution to a play. Yeah, thank you back out for that. Um, you look at the 30, 
third down situations over the last two games and versus the Big 12 opponents, that has to be somewhat a little bit frustrating to you. Yeah. What, what are maybe the commonalities between between those? Because so many of them do appear. I mean, about two thirds of them appear to be manageable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we just got to keep keep working harder at them, and we got to keep emphasizing. We keep got to keep putting ourselves in position. Um, uh, to to work on those situ what and we're looking at those uh, this week. You know, we're going to put them against our, our first defense and say, here's the situations. Uh, play this coverage. Play this pressure. Play this blitz. Mix them up. Play man. Play whatever, so that we can maybe go against faster guys on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, you know, I, I've been pleased with our with our scout team, but it's different. You you don't have AJ Parker covering somebody. You have a true freshman, and and we need to increase that competition level. And that's why this week is so important. It's going to be so valuable to us. And we'll probably do more of that moving forward. Um, after we get through this week, as far as we get into week eight and nine, going good versus good a little bit more, just to cr increase that competition. Anything else? Uh, I mean, you, you can say as, as much or as little as you want on this. I'm sure there's not going to be much, but uh, I noticed that, that Marcus Hay is no longer on the roster, and I know you probably don't want to get into specifics, but can you just talk to maybe how? Frustrating and disappointing that is when you have someone who I know you look at as probably a big part of the future to no longer be around. He decided to go in a different direction, you know, and 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 that's it's his right, and and uh, I didn't agree with him because I, I I really enjoy Marcus, but you have to love the game to do it, and I, I appreciate him being on, honest with me, and and that's this game's hard for for a lot of guys, and so uh, I have nothing bad to say against Marcus Hayes at all. I think he's a wonderful kid. You addressed the tackling issues in part on Saturday. With a week off, are you able to go live tackling uh, a game coming up? Yeah, yeah, we will do that. It's once again NCAA rules. You can only do so much of it. Um, but um, it, that's, a, that's a frustrating thing that we have to get better. The one thing is they know it, you know, and that's the thing. It's not like it's an absolute whiff. It's more wrapping up. It's more grabbing cloth, wrapping up, waiting, and, and you see it. That's the thing. I see there's positive. I see it a number of times. But the few times you don't see it, it, it it's frustrating. So it's something we'll continue to emphasize. But you had mentioned the uh, the junior colleges, um, and some of the rules have changed on the on the in-state recruiting yeah, for, yeah. for JUCOs in Kansas. But I guess for you personally, um, just how big of an asset is that to have you know, some of the best JUCOs in, in, the, in the country right here in Kansas? Well, it's great because we're within driving distance to go see them, go check them out, have them come over and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's still a fit. It's still the right uh, situation, and, and you still have to you do a great job recruiting because that's the other benefit of, of the great system that we have here in junior colleges. Everybody in the country comes to these junior colleges to find guys. Um, just for clarity, you kind of mentioned something earlier. If Jordan Brown couldn't get back healthy, he would be a redshirt candidate? I don't think he can. He can, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe, I, I'm not positive of that, Kellis, but I don't believe he can. Well, something we, 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 we would look at, though. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.